I want to talk about RGB now. So RGB refers to red, green, and blue. Again, it's a three-valued system for representing color. And the most common way that you'll see that is in RGB 888, where the 8 means how many bits you've got for each channel. So RGB 888 is 8 bits for each channel, which is 24-bit color. And this will be the representation of color that we see most often when we're talking about RGB. You could use more bits than that. But I just want to talk about this one in particular because it's so common. RGB typically is talking about a non-linear representation of colour. What non-linear means is that you can't just scale the values. If you wanted to, if you chose a particular colour and you wanted to make it brighter, you couldn't just add on numbers to, to each channel equally and you couldn't just scale each channel by multiplying by 1.2, for example, on each channel because it is non-linear. So typically the way it's, the information is stored is that in those, each of those eight bits, uh, each of those eight bits can store the range from zero to 255. And that will mean from black or, or zero intensity up to 100% intensity. Some encodings like MPEG use a different encoding scheme called YCBCR. And in that case, Y is referring to the uh, what's called luma, which is related to luminance. So it's the intensity of the, the colour, and it will actually have ranges from uh, 16 to 240. So in certain image formats, you're not necessarily going to use the entire range from 0 to 255. And if you've converted from some video image to an RGB image, you, you may not actually have that full range from 0 to 255 represented, depending on how you got that image. Uh, you can see the diagram on the right there is showing uh, how these colours will be represented. So if you had a pure red colour, you would have you would have some high value in the red channel, so it would be close to 255 there, uh, and then you'd have zero values for the other bytes. And if you have something that's half green and half blue, then you might have a low value in the red channel, but then the green and the blue channel will have high values. And if if the... If uh, all of the channels have high values, then you get towards the centre of the diagram and you'll end up with, with a white colour. The order of the colour channels is not standardised and it can differ in different image formats. And it can differ if you have the, the image in memory as opposed to on disk. So, uh, for example, Windows, the BMP image file format, stores data in BGR format, blue, green, then red whereas the PNG image format stores them in the order RGB. And it can also depend on the uh, endianness of the CPU and the endianness of the GPU as to what's actually, what ends up in memory in which order. Now, mostly we shouldn't deal, be dealing with that. We should be using an image library that does the right thing. But back in the days of hacking, you know, C hacking, looking at stuff in memory, this, this could be a point of tripping up. I'll talk about another uh, image format called CMYK now, which is one that is uh, in use in the printing industry. So CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. It uses subtractive color. It's different to RGB. RGB is uh, additive color. That is, if you switch on the red, the green, and the blue phosphors in, in your LCD screen, you end up with a white color. It, it gets brighter. It produces more photons. Here the representation is different. If you add together uh, the magenta and yellow and cyan inks, they'll actually get darker on the page. So the more ink, the darker the result. So it's a, it's a subtractive colour system. So you can see that black is in the middle there. So the Y here does not mean luma or luminance, it means yellow. K is used for black because B would be used for blue. Because So sometimes there are actually... Uh, you can get some printers which actually have not just cyan, magenta and yellow inks, but you can also get blue, red and green inks. So RGB would still mean uh, red, green and blue here. So they've used K for black. Now, the reason they use black ink, even though you could theoretically just get by with cyan, magenta and yellow, and you could synthesise black by mixing all those colours together, but those inks tend to be more expensive, so it's actually cheaper to have a separate uh, black channel. And, and separately deposit uh, black ink on the page. And it also that also solves problems if the registration, if, if the, the way that the, um, these 
these images line up is not quite perfect, um, then black can give you nice borders around things, even if if you were just to use coloured ink, it would, it would end up looking, give you fuzzy borders. So there's reasons why they use black ink. And you can see how an image like that divides up into different images. And you can see that where you have the green grass down the bottom there, for example, that is represented by yellow and cyan, but there's almost no representation in the magenta aspect of the, the, the image. The next one that I'm going to talk about is YCBCR. So YCBCR is a system of storing, instead of storing separate red, green and blue channels, you store Y, which is Luma. I know it's got the same letter as luminance and also the same letter as yellow, but it's actually referring to a thing called Luma, which is a computer representation of the luminance. It's a gamma corrected value, which means it's non-linear, and I'll talk about gamma correction in a few slides time. And then it has a pseudo blue channel and a pseudo red channel. They're actually mixtures of they can be mixtures of blue and green and red and green. So it's got three channels, but there's different ways that you can put these things together in a way called um, chroma subsampling that is represented in this diagram. While we're on the subject of, of this letter Y, um, you'll also might see YUV and you might also see Y-UV represented. So YUV can refer to two things. It can, it can refer to analog information as opposed to digital information such as might be produced in a, an analog uh, video recording system. YUV can also refer to a, a file format. It can be related to JPEG. Y-UV is sometimes used as well, and the Y- there is to make it clear that we're talking about Luma and not luminance. So Luma is basically a digital gamma corrected signal for luminance. I want to talk about this chroma subsampling because it's, it's a bit tricky. When you get a JPEG image, it might be chroma subsampled, which means that the Y and the CB and the CR channels are interleaved in some interesting way. If you just have a look at this, this middle one, 422, the reason why it's got these, these numbers is that we're going to represent the, the Luma component of each of these pixels individually. So, we, so for each uh, four pixel wide segment in the image, we're going to represent four different Luma values. And on the first row, we're going to represent two different colors, basically. And on the next row, we're going to also represent two different colors. So if you, if you look at all of these, what, what, what they're going to do, they have these three different numbers, and they're representing what ratio of information you're getting between the the, the Luma values and, and these color values. So what's actually happening here is that two, two pixels are actually having their colors averaged and we're only representing color for those two pixels uh, in, in, a, in a group. And then the next two pixels will have their color averaged and we'll only represent that average color. And so what that means is that even though we're getting Luma, uh, that is brightness information about every single pixel in the image, we're only representing color information in pairs of pixels. And typically it'll be interleaved in a certain way, such as this block of pixels in the top left of the 422 section here will actually be represented as, in the, in the file format, it'll be Y and then a CB value, and then Y, uh, another Y value, and then a CR value. And so you end up with this YCB, YCR uh, interleaving of information. And so the, the two Y values will represent the, the top left two pixels brightness, but then you have to look at both the CB and the CR values to actually get the color for that, that little block there. The reason for doing this is because it saves bandwidth, right? It's really useful for if you're a, a TV station transmitting information, transmitting video to, to people, you want to save on your, on your bandwidth. This way you, you only have to store for this particular one, 422, you're essentially sending four channels of information instead of sending six channels of information, which would be what you would have to do in the 444 case, where you're actually representing a Y and a CB and a CR value for each single pixel. So for, that, so for sending those two pixels, uh, pixels one and two there, you would have to send six channels of information 
whereas here you can send four. And the human eye is more sensitive to the, uh, the brightness information than the colour. So a little bit of blurring on the colour doesn't matter too much to us, and particularly when it's video, everything's moving anyway. Uh, as long as we can you know, recognise the, what's going on, recognise the human faces and the expressions on their faces, um, that is one way to actually compress the information um, to make the most of the bandwidth. And you can see that there's different ways here how you could um, compress the information. You can compress it quite hard with the 411, for example, or the, the 420 method. This sort of thing matters when you're trying to crop images because depending on how, if it, it can make a big difference on whether you're cropping on the left or cropping on the right of the image because you can end up losing, depending on how you're going to output the information, you can end up losing some colour uh, fidelity, which I'll, I'll get to. So, I mean, each, this, is the, this is the pixels we're trying to represent here in the top, top row of, the, of this diagram. And you, so what you do is you represent that by separating off the, the luma value, which is the, the brightness of each of the pixels. You represent, so you're sending that information, and you're also then deciding how you're going to send the colour. And you're going to, and so this is a, this is a way of sending less colour information than you, than you would ordinarily send. Typically, for a given JPEG, they'll choose one of these schemes. There's, there are a few different image formats for, J, for JPEG. Let's get on to talk about RGB versus ICBCR. There's a way that, here's some mathematical equations for how to convert between these two. I think that you can, you can see that if we were converting in the direction RGB to YCBCR, if you just have a look at this first equation, you'll see that what's happening is that there's, it's a, it's a weighted sum of the uh, RGB values. The reason why we're multiplying by a number and then dividing by 256 is because that is an efficient thing to do. Often, if, you've, if you're convert, uh, computing in integers, uh, you can divide by 256 very quickly by right-shifting by 8 bits. And you'll sometimes see integer approximations of these equations where they'll multiply the red channel by 66 and add the green channel multiplied by 129, add the blue channel multiplied by 25, and then right shift the whole lot by 8 bits. These numbers come from, I think, from the phosphor response on cathode ray tube television sets. So this, was, this sort of thing was designed by the um, television industry standards. So I don't know how applicable these are actually to LCD screens, and I don't know if anyone's worked out how these should change. But but these so these so you might see numbers or similar numbers to these if you if you dig into image processing libraries, and you can see that um, there's this plus sixteen term as well here because the y values tend to be clamped to this sixteen to two hundred and forty range. So you can see that um, the green channel actually has the most impact on the brightness uh, of the image and followed by red, and blue actually has very little impact on the brightness of the image. And that's, that's to do with the, with the way that the, the phosphors light up and we perceive the colour. You can see that the blue, blue channels can be quite, quite dark. And the, the CB is a, is a mixture of blue-greens, and the CR channel is a mixture of red, reds and greens in, in different weightings. <laughs> 